Okay, guys, everyone, good evening. Welcome to the FinEd's International Women's Day webinar. Today's webinar is going to be on Pakistan's women of finance. And we have with us a panel of five speakers, all are very successful women in the finance industry. And we'll be asking them questions about their journey in this specific investment industry. Let's start off by introducing ourselves. I'm Nidhi Najib. I'm an ACCA affiliate as well as a CFA charter holder. I'm a co-founder at the FinEd. And I'm Sarish Babur. I'm an MBA finance and investment, and I'm a CFA as well. And again, one of the co-founders of the FinEd. And what is the FinEd? It's an EdTech platform which provides ACCA and CFA trainings to candidates across the globe. We're gonna start off by um, a short video, which is going to be introducing Pakistan's success stories, particularly women in finance, as well as presenting facts and figures of how women are being represented in our finance industry, and also a case of why greater representation is required. As of 2021, the financial services industry reported a female participation percentage of 13%. In the same year, President of Pakistan, Dr. Arif Alvi, announced the Banking on Equality Policy, which aims to ensure the banking sector adopts women-friendly practices and policies, including gender diversity and financial inclusion. Amongst other visions, the policy framework sets an ambitious target of increasing female participation rate in the workforce to 20%. This will mean thousands of women will need to enter the workforce to achieve this target. Even beyond the banking industry, a lot needs to be done to ensure deserving women are given the chance to excel. Here are some eye-opening facts. In 2020, out of the 50 startups that raised venture capital funds and angel funding, only three were women-led. We'd like to think that technological advancements has made it easier for women to start their own venture. But there isn't much data to support this assumption. Based on a report by the IMF, the overall female participation ratio in the workforce stands at 22%, one of the lowest in South Asia. If we break down the participation ratio based on each region, we can clearly see that the more developed cities have greater participation. While the enrollment figures of males versus females at the university level is equal, only 25% of women with a graduate degree enter the workforce. At senior management and executive positions, there is a lack of female representation as family responsibilities increase. Organizations which have facilitated women to work after marriage and children have a greater participation rate. Only 8% of businesses have a majority female ownership. Why is there such an emphasis on greater diversity at the workforce? Research conducted globally and by Pakistan's Security and Exchange Commission shows a strong correlation between women holding top position and corporate profitability. In fact, return on assets and return on equity were found to be higher of listed companies with greater women representation in 2017 and 2019. After all, encouraging greater number of females to enter the workforce will serve to increase the tax base and could give a boost to Pakistan's GDP. Pakistan is no stranger when it comes to success stories in the finance industry. Today is special because we will be celebrating the grit, determination, achievements, and showcase Pakistan's women of finance. We're going to be starting off with Dr. Shamshad Akhtar. Dr. Akhtar is a development economist, intellectual, and diplomat who was the first woman to serve as the state governor of the State Bank of Pakistan. Her most recent occupation was as the caretaker finance minister of Pakistan. His past career milestones include vice president of Middle East and North Africa at the World Bank and a senior advisor on economic development and finance to UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon. She has been recognized as in international publications such as the Eurobunny Institutional Investor in the Wall Street Journal, 
which named her amongst the top 10 women leaders in Asia. Seema Kamil, Deputy Director, State Bank of Pakistan. Being the first woman to lead a major Pakistani bank, Seema Kamil served as the President and Chief Executive of United Bank Limited. She's held several senior positions in her prolific career, such as the Head of Corporate and Investment Banking at HBL Asset Management Company and Head of HBL's Branch Banking Network. While heading the banking division, HBL achieved the highest annual average growth in customer deposit accounts, placing it at number one in Pakistan. She now serves as a deputy director at the State Bank of Pakistan, being the first woman to hold that position. Akram Khatun, former founding president at the First Women Bank Pakistan. She is the first female banker of Pakistan who initiated women banking in the country, heading Muslim Commercial Bank's First Women branch. She was the founding president of First Women Bank, where she held the title for 11 and a half years. Under her career, First Women Bank became the pioneer for microfinance lending to cater to the credit needs of underprivileged women in both rural and urban settings. Another initiative taken by her at the Women's Bank was to conduct training programs for women entrepreneurs. She has played an active role in the education industry and currently serves as a lifelong senior member at the Jinnah University for Women. Roshana Zafar, founder and managing director at the Kash Foundation. Roshana is a development activist who works to economically empower the lives of women through her self-developed microfinance institution, Kash Foundation. The foundation is Pakistan's first specialized microfinance institution. Prior to the foundation's inception, Roshani worked with the World Bank in Islamabad in their water and sanitation department, teaching women best hygiene practices. Since finding Kash Foundation, she has been the recipient of several awards, including being one of Pakistan's first Ashoka Fellows and the Tamhai Intiaz, one of Pakistan's highest civilian awards. So now we're moving on to that part of the section where we are going to introduce our speakers turn by turn, followed by a Q&A session. We're going to start off with Huma Pasha. Ms. Huma is a senior partner at Usmani and Company Chartered Accountant. Huma has over 35 years of local and international experience and has worked in various global positions, including, sorry, at, in, in various global institutions, including Citibank, Up Power Company, Dawood Hercule Dean in several management capacities. Huma is a professional trainer and has been carrying out workshops, seminars, and conferences at the ICAP, IBA, Pakistan Institute of Corporate Governance, Institute of Internal Auditors, Nation Systems Audit and Control Association. Huma is currently on the board of the Rose 1AAA Mills Limited, UBL Fund Manager Limited, and High Tech Alloy Wheels Limited and has served these boards in various capacity as chair of the audit committee and chair of HRPA. So I'm going to pose our, my first question to Huma, which is, what are some of the challenges you have faced in your professional journey? Ms. Huma, if you could please answer this question. Yes, I heard the question. It's very interesting. You know, my career began way back in 1964. And you will not believe that the challenge I faced was because I wanted to become a chartered accountant and I wanted to do my BCom. And I discovered that the only college that gave was teaching BCom where I could sit for that qualification was an all boys college in Chittagong. That's where my parents were. So it was a real battle getting in admission into that college, but I did it. And do you know now 13 professors female professors teach at that college. And of course, there are numerous girls. So it paved the way for the girls and your later generations to get into commerce because it was in those days thought and not a profession for women to join. And you'll be surprised. We see so many people, who women who passed from IBA, but 
It, the first group of women that joined IBA was in 1975. So my era is that it, education was the most important thing. To get a professional education was the biggest challenge in those days. This really paved the way for a lot of women. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, definitely. So, Wendy, my second question to you is, why is there an underrepresentation of women in leadership roles? And how can you, as a seasoned professional, instill confidence within our community so that the truly capable and talented reach a deserving destination? You know, women have a tendency to take a back seat. I, and uh, we don't actually value ourselves as capable as we really are. And that is something that we really, really must do. And, you know, into your generation, you must get you all to realize how important our roles are. And of course, you know, we are mothers too. So we train our boys at the same time that they appreciate the women that are going to come into their lives. And that is exactly what is happening now. Because in my generation, it was, you know, when I got married, yes, my husband was very encouraging that I worked, but I had to every time resign when he got promoted and got moved to another job. So it was my resignation and my taking up another job there. And uh, so that always meant that my career was uh, always took a back seat. And it isn't necessarily that in one case that I was actually, you know, heading Citibank and uh, their credit admin department and my salary was much, much higher than my husband's. But I decided that I would still resign and follow him all over the world. But now this is not happening. So I do think that they, it's a collective decision. It's a joint decision in families. So people will then move on and be able to, women are now getting into a much more, you know, managerial post and able to actually manage their career. So I can speak on and on, but I, th I think there's a time no, limit. So I'll give the other speakers time. No, no, carry on. If you do have, yeah, if you have any other. Okay. Thing to add, so definitely would like to. Yeah. So th that has actually been a big challenge. But having said that now, I see that your generation is actually taking in the reins. And now what happens is that, you know, we mustn't underestimate the men that come into our life. They are bigger supporters. And in my life, I found that getting into a senior position, helping me has always been, you know, not only my female friends, but all my male friends who have come back and said, yes, we know of somebody who can do it. And we need to be bold enough and have a voice heard. And, you know, the, the, I'm the generation where when we walked in, but like when I first took up a job in Citibank, when we were, and I would be the only female woman there at the, at the executive level. And they would ask me, Uma, can you make the tea? <laughs> can you believe it? That as an executive, I was the one who would be making tea and serving it to everybody. And I just had a very wonderful incident where we were having, a, you know, these youngsters coming in and one of the male, you know, the host of that asked one of the, the males there said, can you make the tea? And he looked around, his wife was also a professional woman, said, looked at her and she was not going to help. <laughs> so he got up and he made the tea and served it to everybody. So things are changing. And I see these little steps are what going to make women progress further. Very true. Definitely, yeah. Perspectives are changing. Yeah. Yes, perspectives are changing. So we will make, uh, you know, we will progress faster. Definitely, for sure. Okay, so we have with us another speaker, Ms. Samreen Shamsher. A brief inter introduction of some Ms. Samreen. She graduated from the NED University and Zevis and is a corporate banking professional working in one of the top banks of Pakistan as SVP. Apart from having a successful career, she is an active traveler and has been to 31 countries so far. She considers traveling as an opportunity to discover new places and realize her own strengths by taking initiatives. She's a staunch believer that traveling is not a lavish hobby, but is a road to self-development. 
So a very interest, interesting introduction, and I will pose my first question to you. What are some of your challenges that you have faced in your professional journey? First of all, assalamu alaikum and uh, hello to everyone, including the panel and uh, other friends and other viewers who are watching us tonight. I hope whatever we are discussing today will be a ray of hope and will encourage other females to come forward and uh, make better changes in their life, both personally and uh, professionally. Uh, I would like thank, uh, to thank uh, Finair team to organize this session and asking me uh, this uh, very interesting question. Uh, about the challenges, actually, uh, of course, uh, Ma'am Homa did explain us the challenges. Of course, um, my challenges were not uh, that critical as was uh, hers. But um, I think as a female, especially uh, living in a third world country, we, uh, we look for validation since our childhood, being a female. And we want to look like a best daughter, best sister, you know, as we go ahead. So everything, in everything, every decision we make, it's about the validation. So, uh, Alhamdulillah, my family has been very supportive. My brother, father, they never had any issue for whatever, whatever I chose to study. Uh, in my family, uh, there have been lots of females who had professional degrees, but uh, you can say that I was the first one in the close relatives who opted for uh, a professional career. And uh, with that, everybody raised eyebrows because they were like, okay, she's already very confident and uh, kind of person who is going to pursue the career. So what will happen about, you know, the next decision in life, who's going to support her? She, uh, she has to marry one day and, you know, all those things. So with that, I started my career. Uh, I, I was in corporate banking. There was a lot of support. But regarding the challenges, I think the challenges, I took more challenges than there were because when I joined, I felt that I had to prove myself. And because I heard lots of stories, because everybody uh, talks behind a successful woman. I have seen this a lot, especially over here in Pakistan. So I really wanted that I have to grow. But at the same time, nobody should say anything about my character. That was, uh, you know, the, something which I knew that I would not going to tolerate. So my ch challenge started because I was in the front office and there was a lot of customer handling. You had to go to the sites, you had to meet everybody. And you know, when you are young, so of course, uh, being female, new in career, banking, you know, uh, what kind of responses sometimes we uh, get. So I was very, very careful. And sometimes nowadays, when I look back, I think that uh, maybe it was not that difficult, but I worked more hard. Maybe if I was a boy, or maybe if I was a male, I I think my journey would have been easier because I had to put in a lot of effort just to prove that, okay, look, I am a female, but I'm not going to leave the office earlier. Or I would not say no to go to a factory because it's far away. I would not say no because there is no pool car or no driver. I'm going to do everything and I will be a role model for the uh, rest of the people. So uh, this is something I really wanted to share with everyone because sometimes it seems that, okay, it was normal, but no, it's basically a double responsibility or a double hassle for a female to pursue a career as well as to prove herself that she is capable of doing it both to the professional figures and as well as to the family members that she is doing something uh, which is right and her career decision was good. I hope I explained that. Yeah, we yes. definitely prove yes. ourselves really hard. We work really hard to prove ourselves to everyone. And you're quite right to double the amount that any um, male, um, uh, someone who's working alongside us would do. So, yeah. And I think um, many women were, would be listening to us around the globe actually, would be able to relate with your struggles because many of us feel the same way. So that brings me to my second question. Um, the in finance industry is still a pretty much male dominated industry. And as you saw in the statistics as well, that uh, women offer professional degree. What can be done to overcome this? I think as uh, more females are coming, they should also uh, be supportive and should be able to market themselves as an ambassador for other females so that the, the people who are working with them, especially the male persons, because if a female is coming to work, I think the credit goes to their family and their supporters as well. 
because you cannot do anything if somebody is not behind your back is not is not giving you much support the females working around the males working around us they are more important to provide a support if they feel that okay the females colleagues they are good and one day our daughter should also be joining the office i think that is the right kind of approach if the males around you they think that the females who are working here they are equally good and because you know what happens that when it comes to marriage i am uh, bringing this topic because this is something which is you know always back of the mind of the daughters of the females joining so when it especially in asia and pakistan when the marriage uh, marriage is considered usually the the guy they prefer somebody who will lead the career or who is already a, a you know sort of person who will handle the home chores and other things so it's very important that we educate our brothers our colleagues sons uh, that they should know why it's very important for females to come in the workforce force and why it's important it's not just a hobby it's important because looking at the economical situations it's very important for both of them to earn and it's it gives great awareness to the female how to uh, it's very important for the upbringing of the children so um, i think support system is very important educating the male colleagues is very important uh, the other thing is that females of course uh, they are uh, i wouldn't say they are challenging there are specific requirements i mean the maybe like some institutions now providing a daycare center the people are providing the transport systems maybe a uh, flexi work hours a daily a uh, few banks they have started flexi work hours and uh, kid daycare center etc so i think this is uh, giving us kind of support system to the females that they do not have to leave their careers in the middle because many females even if they start their career they have to leave it at some point of time and uh, eventually we are deprived of very uh, good females who could have been great professionals but they are no more in the industry just because the lack of the uh, support from the employers yes i agree uh, women practices and need to be adopted because uh, we're 50% of the population if not more so we should um, uh, contribute to the economy and the uh, country's gdp and even though organizations are uh, actually working really hard to have a balanced gender balance ratio but they need to realize that if you want to balance gender you need to cater to the other needs of working women especially those who have children and have other responsibilities very true We're going to move on to our next speaker, Sana Kadri. Ms. Sana Kadri is a chartered accountant from the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Pakistan. She is an IFRS expert with experience of, of over 14 years in a wide array of projects in all divisions throughout the financial services industry. She has worked for prestigious organizations in a senior capacity, including Director of Financial Reporting at Telenor Microfinance Bank Limited. Chief Financial Officer and Company Secretary at Laxon Investments Limited, as well as CFO at Next Capital Limited. She brings her talent and experience of establishing anything from scratch and taking it to an exceptionally high level with collective team effort. She is the founder of EdWatch, an edtech designed around critical skills and development needs. So my first question to you, Sana, is. Why do women not end up in the workforce despite being front runners when it comes to acquiring professional certification? Number one, and how many employers recognize these reservations and actually make an effort to facilitate uh, women by designing flexible working policies? Basically, there are two parts of. Thank you very much for the introduction, first of all. And um, there are basically two parts of this question. Uh, the first one, I think. Um, it's basically as um samreen rightly mentioned that you need your family support uh, finance is generally considered not just in pakistan around the world it's considered to be a male dominating uh, do dominated profession so uh, if huma was able to go to a, an all men's college at a time when it was you know see a woman it did not exist in pakistan uh, it was just because of she had uh, the support of her family and if she has been able to you know maintain her career th despite many gaps due to whatever the family reasons were um if samreen is being is has been able to you know uh, excel in her uh, career it's it's basically because uh, she had the support uh, i am i have been able i am whatever i've done in my life uh, 
small or big efforts that I've put into my career is because I had the support of my family. So there's a big question, especially as far as Pakistani uh, culture is concerned. Uh, my father was the one who actually wanted me to be a chartered accountant. So I had, uh, you know, his support basically uh, to pursue this career. Uh, and, you know, throughout the, throughout my uh, education, my career, I've had my family at my back. So this is what uh, comes, uh, this is, this is basically critical, uh, family support is extremely critical to any, uh, you know, career, to any uh, progress. And uh, uh, finance is obviously considered a male dominating uh, profession. So we generally, women in Pakistan uh, and overall around the world, generally don't get that kind of a support uh, when it comes to finance. Um, the second question is uh, what employers can do. So employers have been talking about uh, gender diversity and inclusion. And uh, diversity and inclusion is what I've seen is generally restricted to the number of women on board, the, the number of women in, in an organization. What we should realize is that, uh, you know, women and men are two different, two separate, uh, two different uh, genders. We are completely different. So it, equal opportunity doesn't mean expecting equal behaviors and equal sort of efforts from both of them. Um, it, it means, uh, you know, equity is more critical uh, if, if you, if question of diversity, wherever the question of diversity comes in. Um, let me tell you an example. Uh, throughout my career, I have uh, seen that, you know, um, especially when, if, if I give you a very simple example of my uh, experience in the firms, uh, women were generally considered to be putting in less effort as compared to their male uh, colleagues. Um, why? Because women were, uh, you know, doing late, uh, were not doing as much uh, overtime as their men colleagues were doing. And why was that? Because being a woman, I know that I have to uh, reach home early. So I come at nine o'clock maximum and I leave at around six, 6.30, seven o'clock, eight o'clock maximum, 10 o'clock. So this was usually the schedule of, of you know, women working in a firm. But if you see, you know, the men uh, who were working with us, uh, they would come at 11-ish, 12-ish, or, you know, somewhere around uh, 1 p.m. even, and they would generally start working very late. So uh, around three o'clock or maybe five o'clock. And then they would sit, uh, you know, late, work late hours till 12 p.m. or maybe, uh, sorry, 12 a.m. or maybe 2 a.m. So what organizations had been doing is that comparing uh, the, the, the time that the person has spent in uh, office after the official hours after the business hours as against the you know time that I should have he should have spent uh, so if you if you if you see the number of hours a woman is spending in that case particularly she's spending as much time as a person the, as, as his male a colleague she is even working more uh, putting in more efforts she's women are generally more productive and they're generally more hard working as I should mention uh, so so the point that I want to make here is that women are, I mean, we, we, we should be, uh, we should be, you know, when, when we talk about diversity inclusion, it should be considered that women are different from men. So uh, you have to create a culture, an environment that is conducive, uh, that, is, that is welcoming women, that is woman friendly. And like, you know, you mentioned that uh, women should get benefit uh, uh, should have uh, daycare centers or facilities like that uh, so that more women are willing to join in. Definitely. And um, the culture should always come from the top and that is the way it could be sustained as well as be effective. So my next question to you, Sana, is that why is there an underrepresentation of women in leadership roles particularly? And how can you as a seasoned professional instill confidence within our community so that the truly capable and talented reach, you know, a deserving destination. Okay. So uh, basically, 
there, there are two issues. One that Huma has already mentioned that we, uh, we, you know, underestimate, we as women underestimate ourselves. Uh, we don't think that we can take up certain roles. If we, we have this, uh, you know, habit of saying no to, uh, you know, risky positions, risky projects, we, we underestimate ourselves. And the second point is that uh, women don't get the opportunity, don't have that networking opportunity as men have. Like women generally don't go on smoke breaks. I was once uh, recommended by one of my colleagues that you should, you know, start smoking just to, you know, uh, you know, start networking with the, start to know the politics of the organization. So, um, so the point is uh, that we don't, I, I mean, I don't think that it's uh, basically uh, more, in, I, I think it's more in Pakistan, but it's, you know, generally all around the world, women don't, men don't mingle that frequently with women. They don't like to network with them a lot and women generally uh, find it more comfortable to be around women. Um, so I think, I think as an, as, as a person, I, as someone who has been, uh, in the profession for quite a long time, uh, we should, uh, you know, like I, I've, I've, I've been working in an organization, uh, we should, we should take efforts, uh, we, we should make efforts to ensure that our organization, uh, come up with such initiatives that allow women to interact more frequently with men because generally leadership, uh, mostly men are there at the leadership level. There, there, there's hardly, uh, you know, if you, if, you, um, if you look at the leadership from the designation point of view, hardly any woman would be there as a CFO. There are very few organizations where CFOs are women. Mostly all the, uh, a woman end up a, as a CHRO, chief HR officer, uh, if we talk about leadership position. Um, so we should actually um, ask our organizations wherever we are working that we should be given equal opportunity to interact with leadership. We should be given equal opportunity to interact with people at senior positions where we can, um, you know, uh, we are able to uh, show them our talent. We have, we are more capable than what we have been to do, what we have been asked to do. Um, so this is only, I think, uh, you know, um, culture, uh, change comes through culture and not just by increasing numbers. Um, so th this is what, what needs to be done. Yeah, we need to adopt change in spirit. Very, very true. Very true. And this is not only mm -hmm. locally in Pakistan. This yeah. is a global issue. And I think many yeah. women would Yeah, this is. They're, they're yes. very hostile towards women, in fact, being men being yes. in um, leadership roles. And that mindset needs to change. Very true. Okay, so we have with us another speaker, Ms. Sara Imran, and a brief introduction. Sara Imran is a young transgender activist and social entrepreneur for socioeconomic development of marginalized communities. She has been working in the field of transgender rights, SRHR, and development since 2013. She has worked with various national and international organizations like Youth Lead, International Youth Alliance for Family Planning, Family Planning 2030, Global Fund for Children, Commonwealth Youth Network for Gender Equality, Rutgers, Youth Voice Count, Accountability Lab, etc. She has done MPhil in commerce with specialization in entrepreneurship. She conducted research on opportunities and obstacles faced by transgender entrepreneurs in Pakistan. After that, she has developed an initiative, Pink Center, which is the first platform of its kind for transgender entrepreneurs in Pakistan. Pink Center envisions to develop and grow a circle of innovative arrangements across different organized verticals to achieve economic change for transgender people in Pakistan. She envisions a world where transgender people are economically empowered and have equal rights. So my first question to Ms. Sara would be, what are some of the challenges you have faced in your professional journey? Um, hello everyone. Um, I will say that uh, uh, before the professional journey, the challenge itself, it's a gender that uh, like even not accepted by our own families. Uh, 
so uh, the struggle started since the like um, i realized that my existence and my identity as a trans woman uh, like the struggling with the acceptance within family and outside the family in the society and overall um but i believe that um, there is no perfect place in the whole world or even in the whole universe you need to find the opportunities within your existing ecosystem and i believe that your gender is not an issue it it is uh, somehow but uh, majorly it depends on your choices life choices that how you choose your life the way the that creates dignity and respect in not only in the family but also in the society and adds value in the reputation and the economy of the, your country so um, so uh, i realized that uh, i like i'm working for the transgender rights and empowerment like in south punjab which is itself is a dip- geogra- ge- geographically deprived region in pakistan since 2013 and like since uh, like working for the nine years like i realized that majority of human right violations happening on transgender people specifically transgender women uh, is due to the fact that they are financially dependent on their abusers they are not economically independent to make informed choices of their lives um so the idea came into my mind that we only talk about the social rights and all 99.9% organization ngos donors are working for the social rights social justice for the transgender people and very less we have talked very less about the economic justice and financial rights of the transgender people and how we can make them sustainable sustainably empowered and self sustainable uh so um i myself started uh, an initiative that is pink center which is for so its own kind like i done a, a rapid analysis of the biggest and the smallest startup incubation labs and the uh, uh, venture capitals and all the data they have is about men and women that how much investment still now has been distributed among men and women and there is not a single data that has been available for the transgender people and I, and i i initiated pink center to fill that gap to empower the transgender community to mainstream them to build they they have skills they are working as an entrepreneur since a lot of years but they are never uh, like uh, mainstream or like highlighted the way or the, they did not get the right uh, economic space in the mainstream market so my um, uh, struggle is to build their capacity as an entrepreneur for instance they know like uh, how to do a good makeup but they don't know how to sell this skill um like i uh, developed curriculum i give them sessions trainings regarding marketing management financial cash flow how to uh, do specifically like digital entrepreneurship like especially after the covid 19 the world is transformed the economic world is transforming into digital uh, spaces and the markets are converting into e-commerce and the stuff so i believe that uh, this is the thing that we need to focus on um, because there are uh, uh, always the two options to be financially independent like one is employment and second is entrepreneurship employment is not a good option because unfortunately the transgender community did not uh, got got the opportunity to uh, complete their education because majority of them were thrown out from their families in the very early age so uh, uh, entrepreneurship is a best tool because they are creative they have a lot of in the um, uh, good ideas that can be turned into income generation activities so uh, like uh, i i am nominated as a transgender focal person from social welfare department and government uh, punjab government uh, focal person for the skill building and economic uplifting of the transgender people through entrepreneurship and we are in the collaboration of the public private institutions in a process of developing a sustainable model for the transgender community that will be not on not only the national level but also on the global level to showcase the world that pakistan is not the only a space where transgender people are beaten where transgender people are facing him in a violation but this is a space where there are successful stories where there are the progressive um, stories as well there are entrepreneurs there are transgender people who are in, included and working 
from the economic generation activities that is not only helping their own country but also the global economy. Well, I would uh, I'll start by saying that you are truly an inspiration, not just to trans women but to women in general, because you have so. Much more than regular uh, people, and you rose up to those obstacles, and you turned them into opportunities, and you made a life for yourself, a successful one, and now you're helping other women and under trans women. So that is truly an inspiration. And honestly, you're raising the bar for anyone who wants to enter this space. And um, I'd like to share with my viewers that Sarah contacted us on our Facebook platform, saying that she would like to. Uh, be a speaker on our session and we were absolutely thrilled and enthusiastic to be the platform that she chose to share her story and uh, communicate her struggles as well as her personal journey in the finance industry. So I, uh, I would uh, ask another question. Uh, why do you think there is an underrepresentation of trans women in, in the workplace in general, let alone leadership roles? And how can you, as a seasoned professional and with so much experience on your hands, instill confidence within this community so that the truly capable and talented rise up to a deserving destination? Um, I believe that um, it, the gap is from the both sides, like within the community as well, and the overall the so, um, um, jobs or like institutional structure as well. stigmatized and discriminated since their childhood that uh, uh, shattered their uh, confidence through for the whole life. And it's very difficult to heal up or to recover from those traumas on the, or the bullying that we faced in the very chi early childhood. And as per the psycho psychology, the incident positive or negative, both in, that happened with you in your early childhood it has an impact on your whole life. Number second, there is not equal opportunities for the transgender people. Like I said that even you can do a random test, just choose a startup, random startup, and just send an email to them that do you have any uh, benefic transgender beneficiary till now? You will, just, you will realize that where is the lacking. And the third thing is that there is... Are you hearing me now? Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. The third thing I was saying that the one thing that has been in the practice that the isolation um, and the development organizations are unfortunately practicing making the isolations of the transgender community, building the separate things, building the separate identities, separate circles, but we need to mainstream them. We need to mainstream them in the, uh, not only in the Pakistan market, but also in the global market. So that like uh, they can be the better value additions in the global economy. Yes, I agree. And globally, the world is changing now. I have seen that many trans women have come forward and they are working and they are now uh, effective and efficient contributors to the economy. And I hope after today's webinar, our webinar is so effective that we create some wave among not only the finance community, but across the entire work environment and work industry so that people actually uh, realize that trans women deserve their space just like any other. They are a citizen and they deserve their rightful place, especially yes. the talented. Thank you, Saro. Our next speaker for today is Bushra Yasser. Ms. Bushra is a fellow member with, AC, with an ACC and CFA charter holder educational background. She has diverse post-qualification experience of nine years across a broad range of areas, including FP&A, accounting, financial reporting, commercial finance, and audit and risk management. She started her professional career with KPMG in Lahore, Pakistan, working in their risk advisory services function. She has the 
opportunity to work with several prestigious organizations such as the Axel Noble Pakistan, Coca-Cola Beverages Pakistan, and one of the biggest industrial conglomerate of Pakistan, ICA Pakistan Limited. Bushra is currently working with Pepsi Cola International Limited. At Pepsi, she has led several financial reporting teams, including Pakistan's market, Asia Pacific, and Asia Middle East and Africa sectors. Her current role covers the MISA sector CapEx planning. She is recognized as a young leader and regarded as an inspiration for many at Pepsi Cola. On a personal end, Bushra's interests range from outdoor fun activities, gardening, and spending time with her family and friends, as well as traveling. So my first question to you, Bushra, is that what are some of the challenges that you have faced in your professional journey? Thanks, Nida, for uh, that introduction. Uh, and before I jump into answering that question about the challenges, a uh, big thank you to uh, the FINET team, uh, Nida and Sairish, for firstly inviting me uh, to sit amongst this really uh, amazing panel of ladies. Um, I think hearing their stories, uh, their career journey so far has been inspiration in itself. And uh, I, th I know they've already achieved so much, uh, but uh, their uh, futures are even more brighter. So a lot to learn from, uh, from all of them. Um, and coming back to uh, the question itself, uh, in terms of uh, my uh, the challenges that I've uh, uh, encountered in my professional journey so far, uh, not as something as difficult as Ma'am Uma uh, mentioned. You know, I I wasn't really a pioneer in uh, you know maybe uh, jump, jumping into uh, a field that was where women were really not considered or not even eligible to apply for at that time, but. Um, in a, uh, as every one uh, of us have encountered, and I, I know I speak for many uh, um, people, uh, especially girls today, that when we're having those sort of uh, critical uh, discussions with our managements, uh, be it about any new opportunity, any career growth, any promotion coming up, uh, often at times we've been asked that question about our personal plans, um, about, you know, whether we uh, getting married, starting a family, uh, something that our male counterparts would never be asked. Um, I find it uh, very strange um, and I used to laugh it off initially, but then I started understanding that this is truly a bias um, and uh, it's the way they think, uh, management used to think. I don't know whether it was really a roadblock in any of my career moves or promotion. Uh, back those days, but uh, it definitely gave me that doubt. Uh, think, you know, uh, made me think that what about my past performances, my qualifications, my potential that I bring to the organization? Was that all secondary? And me being a woman, um, maybe having that personal responsibility, which I believe <laughs> the men do have to, but they're never questioned about it. So I think um, basing your uh, future growth solely on that, um, you know, you might, uh, I, I was able to probably strive through that, laugh it off maybe, uh, or just push through it, but um, maybe somebody uh, amongst us um, uh, or any other across the globe, you know, we women might second guess ourselves. We might actually give up an opportunity. Like I think Sana and uh, Samreen had also mentioned that uh, we often tend to not go for some challenging roles just thinking that uh, we might not be able to do it or we have these responsibilities. So those were the sort of challenges that I saw um, and experienced. And the second one in which I have now started to really work upon is um, something about that we women in, in general tend to look for mentors. Um, but I think if we had sponsors, so there's a difference. I, I, I believe mentors, are helpful, they help you guide, pave way for you, but you need a sponsor sitting there, you know, to be um, your advocate there, so that, you know, uh, if you're being considered for some option, um, that is something uh, somebody can say, yes, she deserves to be at the table. 
So I think that was one challenge that I foresee um, uh, is still going to be ongoing for a time. Um, it, it's up to us, our generation and the coming generations that we offer those sponsorship opportunities, which I think we uh, did not have, uh, we were missing. Uh, lacking. Um, had we had those, I think we would have had even far more accelerated growth in this industry. Um, so yeah, I think these were just a couple of challenges, not as heavy as the rest of the team, but definitely my own personal challenges. Yeah, everyone has their own personal journey, but I do agree that women do need to vouch for each other, and that's yes. the way that we are going and to And I would like to add something. I totally agree with you, Bushra. And those women who are married and have kids, um, this is a very cliche question that is always asked, how do you balance your work life or your career with your family life? So I think uh, in their careers, they are asked this question at least once. And I could vouch for that. <laughs> <laughs> true, very true. Okay, so we come to our second question. And that is that, uh, um, a lot of women are, especially women are leading when it comes to obtaining professional certification. However, um, why do employers um, see, see that there is these, sorry, let me rephrase this question. And how many employers um, recognize that women, although they're acquiring these certifications, they are still not entering into the workforce as much. We don't see that conversion ratio. So, what are employers actually doing in order to encourage women so that they enter the workforce and perhaps maybe even designing some flexible working policies to facilitate and ease their entry as well as to ensure that they stick around? Yeah, no, I totally agree with you. And um, I think uh, this phenomena, let's put it this way, is not only limited to finance. I think uh, it's, I think, rather well documented. There are a couple of other main uh, mainstream professions where we see women doing amazingly well in numbers and in quality as well, um, gaining those relevant educations or professional certifications, but they don't end up in the workforce or their numbers tend to dilute when uh, they're climbing up the ladder of uh, organizational hierarchy. Um, and I think it's, um, it's a no-brainer. Uh, it's uh, definitely our social setup. Uh, like the rest of the panelists were also saying that, you know, it's uh, how uh, our society thinks, how if you're lacking the family support, um, it does uh, create a dent in uh, the pathway, uh, creates a roadblock. Uh, women tend to drop out. Uh, you know, they uh, we, we tend to have that sacrifice official um, uh, tendency. Uh, I won't uh, give it a negative connotation. I think uh, everyone wants have their own set of priorities. Um, uh, we want to take care of our kids, our elderly, uh, our families, and we are willing to prioritize and do so. But um, I think in these uh, last two years, especially with the COVID, uh, where most of us have been working from home, uh, we've seen our, uh, our partners working from home, children are being homeschooled, um, and I think we've seen women being impacted a bit more, um, say, a step uh, higher or harshly uh, during these times because, again, um, like you said, we're always managing uh, work and life. And um, it, it, these last two years have been really hard on uh, the women gender specifically. Um, but at the same time, I, I think this was a great opportunity. Um, I've seen a lot of men step up. Um, they have actually uh, started taking uh, active interest in, you know, maybe helping their children with the, um, you know, homeworks, um, operating the Zoom uh, for them from home, uh, taking their classes, or, you know, just doing simple contribution in terms of home chores. So I think that's need of the hour. You need to recognize that in these challenging financial times where uh, having that single breadwinner it's going to be, uh, it's, it's rather unnecessary pressure on uh, the male members of our society when women can be equally productive uh, and, uh, you know, provide that necessary financial support to the team, uh, to their families uh, for that matter, um, and, you know, relieve uh, the, their male uh, partners uh, at the same time. So I think um, uh, definitely uh, things have started changing, but it is something that a conscious effort needs to be done. Um, we need to be encouraging that. I think like the, the rest of the panelists said that we need to be inculcating that, uh, educating 
our um, new members of the society, starting from our families to our work colleagues as well. So yeah, definitely that needs to be done. Organized nations need to uh, really step up as well. Uh, and I think a lot has been done uh, in the recent past uh, in many organizations in Pakistan. Uh, I can speak from my current organization. Uh, there's a wonderful uh, daycare facility uh, where both parents can, you know, just uh, know that their children are in, you know, some safe hands and they can concentrate on their work. Um, uh, you know, having that flexi hour options, you know, you can start late, you can work uh, uh, late. Um, say you need to take a gap in the day. Those are the sort of, uh, you know, flexi timings that are being offered by the organizations these days. Um, also, uh, I, uh, I know for a fact that some organizations are really promoting women uh, to join back in the workforce. Um, and, you know, maybe after having a, a, a child or maybe they had a career break for whatever reason. Um, so they're actually um, educating uh, females while selecting, uh, I think as part of the application process where they're encouraging women to apply and come back into the workforce. So that's very promising in itself. Um, also, I think uh, one other area that uh, organizations really need to look into and maybe they will in due course is, you know, this uh, paternal leave, uh, which I think right now is rather very insufficient, you know, maybe seven to 10 days uh, and uh, uh, men of the family have to be back to work. So um, I think there needs to be a fine balance there. Uh, men uh, need to be uh, given extended some or have some more enhanced paternity leaves as well, so that you know they can be there at a time when their uh, partners may not be physically or mentally uh, that fit to take care of the uh, families. So yeah, I think those are some of the areas that have already been worked upon by the organizations, providing the necessary support and creating a more conducive environment uh, for women to come back uh, into the workforce. So yeah, I, I hope it brightens up uh, in the future as well with more efforts from the organizations. Yes, hopefully, De definitely. Like there's a big buzz on, no, I wouldn't say big, that would be a bit too much to say, but there is a buzz about sustainability. So I would, we both of us as co-founders would like to request the corporate industry to actually listen to this and adopt it in spirit as well as in policy. And um, so that actually women are encouraged to work as well as join back after uh, long maternity leave. Yes, and, and a job and a task should be based on merit. Why have a job or a simple task be gender defined, whether it's at home or it's at the workplace? So that was something that was always really confusing to me and uh, hopefully things are, things are changing and hopefully will change further as well as more women enter the industry. So um, thank you so much. We'd like to thank our panel of speakers uh, for joining today's event, for giving us your time. You made this whole event very interesting, a lot of fun, and a lot came out of it. it was, I think it was a very positive event. And even though our focus today was just on the finance industry, the issues discussed in today's webinar, unfortunately, they transcend across all industries, indicating that the industry leaders need to take ownership of these issues. And we all need to join hands in designing a more exclusive workplace, which not only by policy, but in true spirit, features equality and flexible working practices. And even though today's webinar featured women from the finance industry, but in reality, every woman is a woman of finance, regardless of her being a homemaker, a working professional, an entrepreneur, or even an employed professional. So we at Finet would like to pay tribute to all our women folk who go miles to budget, save and invest, as well as spend hard earn earnings. You truly are Pakistan's superheroes. And wonder women. And wonder women, definitely. Thank you all for Thank you so today. much for your time. Thank you so much, Thank everyone. You. And we're going to Thank you. Happy, Thank you. Happy, happy Women's Day. Thank you for having Thank us you. here. Happy Women's Day. Yeah. Happy Women's Day. Bye. Bye. Bye.